Welcome to the Premiere Pro Second Tutorial. In this video we are going to discuss sequence and timeline which are very important factors while editing your videos. In Premiere in one project, you can add multiple sequences, in case if you are doing a complicated project. Let's take a glance at how it works. This is a video that we edited in our previous class. You can see here we have a sequence for these videos, which is created by Premiere automatically. We can create multiple sequences, if we are working on video and graphics, or if we have different clips of different FPS or resolutions. FPS means frames per second. If one video is shooted on 30 FPS, and another one is shooted on 60 FPS, then sometimes while editing we get some glitches in our project, therefore we edit them in different sequences. To create a new sequence simply click on the file. Then click on new. Then click sequence. For creating a sequence we can use the shortcut key, Ctrl plus N. Or click on a new item in the project window. Then click on the sequence. The Premiere will provide you with some presets of sequence. You can choose your camera from here on which you have recorded your video clips. If you are not finding your camera details here, then simply click settings. And then choose custom. Select your video frame rate and frame size. In our case, it is 29.97, and the frame size is 1920 by 1080. If you have no idea of your video frames and frame size, just view your videos in list view in the project window then you will see complete details of your videos such as video frame rate, video duration, video, and audio information, etc. I know this is something boring and difficult for you, so let me show you a simple trick for creating a sequence. Simply click new then click on sequence, and type a name for your sequence. I am renaming it as class 2. Then click on OK. Your sequence has been created. But this is not the sequence we want to create. To match it with our video details simply drag your video to the timeline. Premiere is very smart software it will detect that you have created a wrong sequence. It will show you a dialog box that says. The clip does not match the sequence settings. Change sequence settings match to match the clip settings. Just click change sequence settings. Please remember to keep this box checked for the future. The Premiere will change your sequence settings to match it with clip settings. This trick is so simple, right? Now our sequence has been created and matched with video details. You can see now we have two sequences, one sequence name is class 2 and one is pixel videos. You can also see the sequence in the project window. This is the icon of sequence. Please remember it. We can rename our sequence after creation. Simply click the list view, and then double click on your sequence name. Or right click on sequence, then click on rename. Give a new name to your sequence and hit enter. Now you can see our sequence name has been changed. This is our timeline as we have discussed it in our previous class. In the timeline, we have some different tools. We will be discussing a few of them in this class. We have some video and audio layers in our timeline. By default, we get three video layers and three audio layers. We can add more layers if need them. Multiple layers are used for adding text, overlaying graphics or logos over the video, and things like that. Audio multiple layers are used for adding voice, background music, and voice effects. We can zoom in and zoom out our timeline by using this bar. Just click on it and drag it to the left and right to zoom in and zoom out. We can also zoom in and zoom out a layer if we want to see the thumbnails of the videos on the timeline. And same as for audio layers. Normally I don't use thumbnail view, if you have a larger screen then this option will be best. This is a snap tool which is a very important tool of the timeline. L this tool works as magnetic. For example, if I drag these two clips to right. Between the first and second clip, you will see there is a black screen, this is because there is some empty gap between our clips, to remove the black screen we will need to put both clips together. Now I have joined these clips together but still, there is a black screen that appears for a second. This is because there is still some gap which we cannot see. 
To cover this gap snap tool is very useful. If we turn this tool on and make the clips closer together, they will be automatically attached to one another as a magnet attract metal. Snap works the same as like magnet. It will attract clips to each other to cover the blank space. In the timeline we have an eye option it is used to hide a layer. For example, if I put my third clip on the second layer, now our video will look like this. Because we have added the third video on the second layer. And I have turned off my second layer it will hide the media we have on the second layer. This tool is used to hide something that we don't want to see in the program window. The lock option is used for locking the layer, if we lock a layer then we will not be able to change anything on that layer. The layer will be locked. These tools are very useful, when we work on some projects you will experience it in practice. In audio, we have a microphone option. This option is used for recording audio, if you want to sync your voice with video then this option will be helpful. If you have edited your screen, and it's irritating you and you don't know how to fix it, then simply click three dots next to your workspace and then click on reset to the saved layout. In the next class, we will discuss editing tools. Thank you so much for watching have a great day.